In this particular scene, I was just leaving the record store where I shop. This is the owner and his crazy cool classic Cutlass Supreme. And we were just rolling out in the shop. It closed. Good morning, y'all, man. I'm just um, fresh out of bed this morning. I've been cleaning up the studio, as you can maybe see a little bit. Um, you know, I done pulled out my... Um, Pulled out my MPC here and I got my, um, put my other mixer out on the table and I got my other mixer that's kind of right here as well, which a little bit of light, but not directly, I guess. Yeah, I got a lot of, a lot of cleaning to do in here as I've already done plenty. Um, got my speaker wall back here, as you can see, and then I got my, um, my roads and my synthesizers on top. But um, and my tuba over here, I recently got rid of my bass guitar because I'm gonna just start doing more tracks, just playing um playing tuba. You know what I mean? Cause that's my that's my kind of main bread and bread and butter. I mean, it's just kind of who I am and everything like that. And I feel that you know, oftentimes I'm kind of like trying to do, I guess, what will essentially kind of work. You know, and the thing is, is like you know, I know people like what they like. Or whatever but sometimes I feel like you know when you're forming a style or whatever the case may be whether you have like many different styles like you know a lot of people do I feel like you know there's a lot of times when you just I don't know how can I put this like you just um, you, excuse me you do sometimes what'll work, but it's not necessarily like, you know, like who you are, you know? And I don't want to be doing that. I mean, it's cool. You know, sometimes I do this, sometimes I do that. But like, y'all yeah, been playing tuba for a very long time. So somebody that plays tuba on all their tracks is more of a unique. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Whew. Well, nah, what I was saying was just like somebody that does, you know, the, uh, tuba tracks on pretty much all their thing, all their music is more of a unique quality than it is like something that, you know, sounds kind of like what everybody does. And so it's not that I'm trying to be unique or be different. It's just that I like kind of already am. I kind of already do something that's kind of rare in, you know, music. So. I decided to just lean over in that direction and continue to play like majority of my bass lines with tuba instead of bass guitar, you know? So that's what I'm gonna be doing. But right now it's like, I think I actually I took my watch off, but it's early in the morning here in Atlanta. And um, my wife's got a show later on tonight. I think she's gonna be popping back over here and picking me up around like 5.30. So. What I'm gonna try to do is record, um, I'm gonna try to record a track and I'm gonna try to upload my discography back up to bandcamp.com so that all my music will be on streaming platforms so that everybody over the world can basically access my music. And so those are my two big goals is to, um, is to put, up my, put up my music Upload all my music, which I don't think I'll get around to all those tracks and them, all those albums, getting them all up and uh, and make a track, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's what I'm going to work on doing. I'm not sure if I'm going to try to record that whole process because I do want to focus on, like, getting the work done. But maybe every now and then, you know, I, like, turn the camera on and everything like that. But we'll see. So... You can't see me right now, but I'm setting up kind of like a small kit. I'm setting up a small kit right now, um, which is kick, snare, and hi hat. Um, kind of want to just strip down the sound a little bit and just wear kind of like go with like bare bones. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna be. Um, you know, doing like three mics, I think, and keeping it real, real simple. Um, not sure how it's gonna sound, but you know, normally I'll have like two cymbals and you know, all kind of stuff going on. And I don't, I don't 
don't want to do that. I mean, it is kind of that the goal is to like finish today um, because I have like limited amount of time to work, you know, but I still want to make something that's quality, obviously, but yeah, I mean, I'm just making a simple, simple setup. You know, I got my, my mic bag is over there on the side right now. And so I'm gonna, I already got my kick drum mic that's inside of there. And then I'm going to grab another stand out of here in the closet for the hi-hat. Um, kind of not sure what mics I'm gonna use yet for, for this. Um, I know I'm probably not gonna use like the same exact type of mic because I had like two um, like SM7s, but I, I still would like to get like a different kind of sound like a diverse sound. So pretty sure I'm not gonna use both of those mics. I know y'all probably couldn't see me that much on that. Let me back this up a little bit, but I think so I have this this is a this is my AKG mic. Tom, let me use a Tom mic on my snare. I kind of like the way that sounds a lot of times. Get like a, well, I don't know that you truly get it or not, but I hypothesize that you get a darker tone with a Tom mic on a snare. So that's what I'm going to do. Man, this AKG mic, I really like this. Honestly, I kind of like the design more than anything. I can't really say. I can't really say that it like necessarily sounds like so, so much better, but you know, if you're inspired to use something, hey, use it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just gonna do a three mic situation here. I mean, I got this Tom drum out, but I hadn't even like thought about like any like Tom feels in the track that I'm thinking about that I'm working on. I, mean, I haven't started yet, so I can't even say like working on, but but yeah, so got like my little three mic set up right here. Got AKG going straight to the hi hat. My uh, this is like a PG fifty six sure going to a snare, and then inside of the inside of the kick. And you can't see it, but right up in here, I got my um my AKG D12 D112. So aim that right up in there, and there you go. So I finally got the the studio like connected and hooked up and stuff. Right now, like pretty much just kind of organizing chords again. <laughs> nah, but for real, um, I got my drums like kind of set up. Well, at least the three piece I'm gonna use. So, you know, I got my my hi hat. You know, so I'm going to I'm going to you know probably create like a nice drum track, and. After the drum track, I'm going to just kind of try to solidify in the pieces that I want to kind of hold their predominance in the track. Um, what I mean by that is like, I think, I don't know why it is, but I think the things that are like most important to me in a track, I think for whatever reason, like the order in which I record them in is how they 
begin to like kind of have their importance so to speak so what i'm kind of getting at is like in this track to me like i think the kind of like most important things would be like the drum track um i think i'm kind of thinking about the drum track and then i'm thinking about like the bass line next um but i think i want the bass line to kind of sit behind the chord progression a little more so it's like there's these things that i want to be important to me but like realistically speaking they're more important to the track in a different order than the order that i want them in so i'm trying to kind of um record them in the order of importance that they should be in the track more so than the importance that I want them to be in my own mind so that I'm kind of doing the track justice instead of just serving myself. And I don't think one is better than the other, but I think the experiment of doing different ways between those two priorities when I'm recording is kind of important um, to just kind of seeing what the overall outcome is. So I'm going to put on my headphones, turn on, turn off, excuse me these uh my room monitors in the studio um i got my drumsticks ready and everything like that and then i'm gonna start to uh tap in like a a tap tempo um which is kind of slow but um i got that going on and now i'm pretty much just like um like after after I put in my tap tempo here, now I'm just gonna kind of like increase my bar count to like uh, eight bar, um, and this this is just for like sequence one or whatever. So that's kind of like where I am now with it. And I'm not sure that that's where I'm gonna particularly stay with it, but um, first what I'll do is I'll like record my drum loop. And then after I do my drum loop, I mean, I kind of want to do my chord progression. Um, but like, I really kind of would rather record my bass line first with my tuba. So I'll figure out which order I do those in. And, um, and then after that, you know, I mean, just kind of keep whatever first things first, like to be first things first try to keep the priority on point i mean i still got to kind of mix these these tracks down on on my mixer here because um honestly like oh, sorry honestly like my mixing levels are really really off right now um because i just rehooked this mixer back up so i don't know like what any of the the levels are on or anything so i have to kind of like mix this down now and kind of see what everything sounds like so i have to record like some test drum tracks and kind of get everything sounding you know vaguely close to what i want it to sound like i mean it's just a three track mix so it's got a drum i got a kick drum a snare drum and a hi-hat and um yeah just try to make sure stuff's like not peaking in a crazy way um yeah so that's kind of where i'm with it now so i'm not gonna i don't think i'm gonna sit here and do all of this on camera mixing and everything like that but once i um get everything kind of mixed down the way that i want it i'll probably from that point um you know record the drum track maybe let y'all hear the drum track and and yeah I, I didn't i didn't even hook up like any like crash cymbals or anything like that no toms um i guess i could have gave myself a crash but it's i don't know we'll see <laughs> you'll see what i come up with so I just had like an interesting kind of idea. I was like testing the drums and everything like that and they were sounding pretty good. Um, I think I might have the levels right. I was just kind of testing out the, you know, the hi-hat here 
and just getting a nice like microphone uh level through the mixer you can see the green channel right there one uh number one that's where i was kind of just testing out the um the levels on there and then i started thinking about how um the sp404 um rolling sampler has like all of these effects on it and so i was thinking about um maybe like before running like i got all of my microphones going through my mixer right now so i was thinking like if i run all of my mic inputs through my mixer what if i run i mean excuse me i run all my microphone inputs into the mixer and then after i run my mixer out i'm running my mixer into my mpc right here and so this left and green channel they are pretty much uh coming out of the mixer and so every mic channel's going in out, out out of the drums and into the uh, mixer and then out of the mixer into the mpc but if i stop the channel i'm thinking about like stopping the channel right let me make sure i can see good but i'm thinking about stopping the channels from the mixer to the MPC and instead of like running those channels directly from the MPC into I mean into the mic from the mixer to the MPC what if I run all of those out into my SP404 first then I can kind of put like maybe a tad bit of compression or something on on my drums or like whatever selected piece of equipment that i want to first you know i mean it is like another chain of like effects so but i mean you know so what i'll do is i'll run the mixer i run the mixer in to the ends, the line in inputs on my SP404. And then I gotta get basically two more plugs to run those into, or excuse me, out of the SP404 and back into the MPC. So I thought I was gonna just kinda do like no fills or whatever, meaning like no hi-hat, no tom drum, but like I'm still gonna do them. I'm just like not going to individually mic them, you know, cause I don't know, man, like I need some fills. I feel like I need some fill. It's gonna sound like loop. That's my tom drum. You know, I need to clear this space like right here where this bag of chords is to be able to like put my, um my symbol that I got right here, or the symbol stand at least, this joker just like folded out. I need to spray some doggone WD-40 up in there because this joker is not wanting to move. But yeah. So I can't lie, like I was a bit, I'm a bit like slightly concerned that when I record the, um, the hi-hat and the, um, I mean, excuse me, the symbols and this um, this uh, floor tom that I just put right there. I'm a little bit concerned that it like won't be like recorded just because there's not an individual, you know, microphone the way there is on my hi hat here and the way that there's one on my snare and I have one that's going into the back of the kick drum. Like I don't have anything in this room to like record that and so i'm just like i'm a tad bit worried that that won't get recorded but i'll just kind of like record um what i'm thinking i'm gonna do is just record i record like just when i'm getting my levels and everything because i'm about to work on just getting my levels and so as i'm as i'm doing that like i'll think about how the cymbals sound because i think i'm gonna do like an eight bar loop so when I do that, like if I'm not satisfied with the way I hear them coming through, then at that point, I'll probably just run another uh, 
room might kind of in this like this general area like because i mean the kick drum is like if you see the i mean not kick drum but the floor tom's right here the cymbals right here and so i'm thinking like maybe i'll put like a little room mic kind of like in that general area and we'll see how that sounds i really like the levels of like what i just recorded but it didn't end up turning into like a perfect loop so like the harsh reality when you're like creating you know a track and it's kind of like loop based i mean even though like it's loop based meaning i'm playing a loop and then i'm you know what i'm saying well i'm playing a loop and then i'm you know making the loop come back and reoccur again instead of recording for the whole duration of a song is that that loop's got to have a perfect turnaround you know what i mean if they have a perfect turnaround and when it drops back on the one you're not going to be on the one you know so unfortunately i got to redo it i know y'all didn't hear it because i didn't put it in the clip but you'll see i like this uh pattern that i came up with um like i said i'm well i didn't say it already but I'm using, I'm not using, and I'm not recording in direct audio, so don't expect the quality of this drum track to sound right. I'm in a very, like, vloggy, like, mind, mindset right now, so. But I got this pattern that's like, doom, 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 doom. So it's like a very, it's a simple pattern, but it's like, you know, um, the ba it's very bass driven, and I'm trying to get this, you know, to loop properly. having issues with the tempo I think I need to switch my metronome sound to uh, something a little more I don't even know whether to call it subtle or not but Metro click on that one. I wasn't really fulfilling that. So that was probably like the closest one that I've gotten to it. Still wasn't it though. listening a little bit more like instinctually right now I don't know why I wasn't doing it before but I think this should be the right one right here <laughs> a little bit too instinctually right all right let's get it going just want to drive that tempo so much faster I'll turn it up a little bit louder in my metronome and my headphones
rushing his tempo. Uh, I'm going to tone it up just a little bit to like 78 because I keep trying to drive it to that place. So let's put it there and see what happens. So the loop, looking for the turnaround in the loop. It's like closed, it's not there though. It's not, it's not there yet, it's like I'm gonna try it one more time. It's like it's like off by like a hair. I mean it didn't meet it didn't meet the turnaround. It didn't meet the turnaround, so let's try it again. Turn around. Still didn't meet it. All right. We gotta get this thing right, cause I'm telling you, man, like if your loop ain't right, it just, the whole track just sucks. You play all this nice stuff on top of it and it just ain't hitting. Just, I'm not locked in, like metronome or metronome, like this is just what happens when you don't make a track in a while, but. I'm glad I didn't get that one right anyway because I accidentally hit the microphone on my snare.
It's funny how my hi hat sounds like it's got this funny sound to it. I need my doggone computer to like. It's crazy because like all of these people are like messaging me right now. And I'm slick, not even mad about it for one reason. And that reason is because my laptop is like legit about to die. And hadn't they sent me these messages, I probably would have like kept on recording and killed the battery on my laptop and been mad. But, uh, I need these text messages to like legit stop coming through right now. Like I, I love y'all to pieces, but I'm like legit trying to record and sometimes you just forget to turn that kind of stuff off. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna try to make up this drum loop. Like that's that rhythm that I want out that kick. what it's kind of about right there, that kick. I like lost it at some point there. I'm starting to realize like, just focus on that kick because that's my primary focus and nail that kick and everything else will fall in line. So. I rushed it initially. seem like here right here turn around yeah Yeah, I like it. I'm really happy about that. I got a little Tom in there. I realized again, you know, back before I even had like mics, Specifically like for Tom and this individual mic and so on and so forth like I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing all that. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't I mean, how do I put it like I couldn't um, I Couldn't like use this mic and use that mic and I you know like I use what I had and now like I'm not even gonna lie like from skinning the fat back trimming the fat back. You know what I'm saying? Like I like how everything still works and fits and sounds well and like I didn't put all of everything that I had into it you know what I mean I mean I put everything I had into it don't get me wrong but like I still like it still sounds good with minimal resources yeah 
I like the way the track sounds, but I think like right now what I want to do is like add a little bit of a. Uh, I forget what this. Oh, give me a second. I kind of forget what this one instrument is called. Um, it's a bad boy called. This is my. I want to say kibasa. Yep, I was right. So I want to put like a little kibasa. I think that'll be clean right there. So we got an eight count like this. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. And then like what I'll do in the next sequence, we use the same drum pattern, but then we'll bring the instrument in. So on the first eight bar pattern, it's all about the drums and the percussion and, and the establishment of the groove. Um, I don't even know that I'll bring the bass line in right there, but um, let me turn these, uh, turn these speakers down. When you're like, when you're recording, you know what I mean? I mean, a lot of people that have been recording for a long time know that, like, if you got your speakers going and it's playing music into the room, but you're also recording microphones, you're gonna record what the speakers are playing along with what the microphones are doing. And in that case, I'll be recording the kibasa, and it'll record this into the microphone, but it'll also record, you know what I'm saying? My, um, It'll record the speakers playing the music in the room, so. Just thought I would say that real quick, just for, you know, people that aren't seasoned in recording or whatever. But right now, right now what I'm doing is I'm just duplicating the same track I had before. And then what, I'm, what I did was on my mixer, I muted track one and track three. And those tracks had my, uh, my hi-hat over here, and track three had my kick drum that's on the floor. So I muted track one, track three. And I'm leaving track two unmuted. So I'm gonna hold the, 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 the kibasa up to my mic two, and then I'm gonna record that, what I just played together into the track. So um, that's what I'm doing right now. This shouldn't take as long as I took to lock in that tempo on the drum. So here we go. One, three, four, two, two, three, four. So I don't like hear it now, so I'm probably gonna have to turn that track up a considerable amount, but. Sounds good, it's kind of faint, but it's low, it's all good. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of want to put like a, a analog delay on my kibasa so when I'm like hearing it, it's going from left to right. But I'm gonna keep the percussion, keep it simple and keep everything in the middle, you know?